welcome to the Assembling Inclusion podcast. On this show, we feature different programs, individuals, and initiatives focused on being more inclusive of individual needs. We invite you to learn right alongside us. If you want some additional resources or access to our courses, please visit our website or follow us on social media. But for right now, let's get right to the episode. Welcome back to the Assembly Inclusion Podcast. Today we're joined by Matt Tilford. Matt is the Community Engagement Manager at the Kelly Brush Foundation. And today we're going to be talking all about Active Project. So Matt, thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, I'm so stoked to be here and, and spread the word on the amazing things that Kelly Brush Foundation is doing. And I'm really excited to dive into all the different things that's being done. But I wanted to start off by talking about Active Project specifically, since that's the first thing I actually found when I was, you know, doing searches of different guests and things like that. I came across that project first. So what was the inspiration behind the creation of that project and the focus on adaptive sports specifically? Yeah, the the inspiration came behind a couple things. It's not just one thing that created and built this project of ours, but one of them was You know, a lot of people go through traumatic injuries and become part of the disability community and their life changes. And that life change is, it's wild for some people that were extremely active before their injury. And then they come into this new life and they have no idea what's possible or available to them. So the active project was created to help those people. And I'm part of that community. And I wish that the active project was around 17 years ago when I sustained my spinal cord injury. I really appreciate that focus on, you know, providing a resource for people who are part of the disability community to show them the different adaptive sports that are possible. There are so many adaptive sports out there, which is really incredible. The more I talk to people, the more I realize how many different variations of sports there are. And it's just, it's really interesting to me how many things are openly available now. Yeah. And it's adaptive sports. But it's recreation. So when people think adaptive sports, a lot of the time they think of like wheelchair basketball or rugby or hand cycling. And, you know, we want this to be available for all aspects of recreation as well. So like there's so many other activities out there that we promote that aren't specific to just like the general wheelchair type sports. Wheelchair basketball is always the first thing that pops into people's minds, I think. So I appreciate that you're kind of showing that there's more possibilities out there aside from just that one activity. And specifically, one of the features of Active Project is that you provide that database of different adaptive sports organizations, which I thought was really cool because I have to say I have an ongoing list of just organizations that are related to adaptive sports because it keeps popping up my Google alerts. But I appreciate that yours is all cataloged in this nice format. Can you explain how users can use that resource? There's two ways to access that on the Active Projects site. One of them is there's an organization page that you can key in, you know, your zip code and how far you'd like to travel. And it'll populate all those adaptive sports organizations that are on our network. There's tons of filters on there as well. So you could put wheelchair basketball and see, you know, what organizations are just doing specific sports and age groups and things like that. And then we also have another avenue, which is our map. And this is a really, really cool feature where you could just look at the whole United States and all the organizations are located on that map. So you can click on, you know, if you're in Utah, you can click on the organizations in Utah and see what activities and programming they offer. I was playing around with the website and I will make sure for our listeners to link it in the show notes. You can go right to the website and check out that resource. I was playing around with the filters. It was really interesting to see the different types of organizations that pop up within the, you know, different search categories and things like that, that you could search by specific sports. And I noticed that the individual adaptive sports themselves also have pages, right? To provide information about not only an organization, but about the specific sport for somebody who might like to explore it. Can you share a little bit about that? What kind of information is available to people just to learn about the sports in general? So we have tons and tons of adaptive sports pages. So anything from wheelchair basketball to water ski to mountain bike. And each one of those pages is basically like an introduction to the sport or activity. 
to kind of guide you and let you know what it takes to get into it. So we'll use basketball as an example, what kind of equipment you would need. So what kind of wheelchairs, where it's played, like, you know, it's played in a gymnasium most of the time on a wooden floor or something like that. It also has tips and tricks and videos. So has tons of videos that shows everything from like different ability levels transferring in and out of the adaptive equipment to show, you know, it's possible for pretty much anyone to how to dribble a ball, to how to recover from a fall, like get back in your chair if you fall on the court. There's a lot of really cool details to that. That's basically just guiding you if you've never known about the sport before. I like that Active Project has both. It has the organizations for the people who already kind of know what sport they're interested in versus, you know, I just want to explore my options in general. I like that you have both kind of sectioned off for people. And I like that you had listed the equipment too, because I feel like that's always probably a really big question is what equipment is needed when you play any type of sport. And those video resources and everything are probably very helpful, I'm sure, for people who are looking to explore a little bit further. So I wanted to jump into the online community piece of Active Project, which I thought was really awesome because not only is it this incredible wealth of information about organizations and adaptive sports in general, but you're also facilitating connections and conversations between different athletes, which I thought was really great. How does the platform encourage this type of connection and communication between users? Yeah, there's a couple of ways that you can connect and communicate with folks. One is create your own user profile when you log in and you can put your, you know, your about you, you can put your sports and hobbies, interests, and then what you actually participate in. So going back to that map, users are on that map as well. And you can search and filter through that map within areas and using your zip code and specific sports and people that play those sports or interested in those sports will populate on the map. You can also put your social feeds in there. We are working on a message system right now that's going to be launched soon where you can actually message through the platform, which is going to be really cool. Right now you can connect with each other through your social feeds and add those links. And then Another really great way to connect with other, or actually let me go back to the map because there's some features of the map that I absolutely love. I live in a van and travel full time. So I'm all over the country going to sports tournaments and rehab hospitals and adaptive sports organizations. And I use the map to find those, those organizations and those, those events. But I also use the map to find other people like me that enjoy the outdoors or, you know, the active lifestyle. And when I'm going to travel somewhere, I'll get on that map and reach out to folks and say, Hey, I'm going to have my hand cycle with me. Let's go for a hand cycle ride. I don't know the area. Take me on a ride. So that's like a really cool feature. But then we also have forums and the forums have been really, really awesome for multiple reasons, finding events, people, there's regional forums. So you could go to the, you know, the West Coast Forum and people put events on there or just want to chat or just find friends that way. And then there's individual sports forums where each one of those sports pages that we have has a forum as well, where you can pop in there and just ask a general question. And our platform has people that are maybe brand new to the adaptive sports world and people that have been 20, 30 years plus. So there's a lot of knowledge on the platform and people are utilizing that for, you know, Hey, how do I do this? You know, our introduction pages are just an introduction. It's just the kind of the guide, but to get deeper, jump into those forums and ask people questions that way. So there's tons of avenues to connect with people through the platform. That's really awesome that there's so many different options there for people. I was looking at the forums a little bit in preparation for this. And I thought it was nice to see like that you could ask questions and kind of get responses from, you know, 
the water group of people. That's so cool that you could pull people up on the map too. That has to be so great for people just to quickly find somebody else in your local area who's interested in the same thing as you and just to be able to like, you know, get together from that and facilitate that offline relationship and dynamic as well. That has to be really great for the users. And you have a lot of users. There's over a thousand, I think on there. Right. We're at like the 2000 mark around there right now. Yeah. So, even, so even more than I thought. <laughs> That's really great. There's a wealth of information there for people. And that map is really great for people that live in rural areas as well. If you're in a big city, you're probably already connected in somewhat. Doesn't mean you can't use the platform. I think you still should. And there's always new people joining the disability community every day. So keep using that. But for folks in the rural areas that maybe have to drive three plus hours to an adaptive sports organization. This is an opportunity to find other people that might be closer that are interested in the same things as you and you can recreate with them. You know, I, I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, the more rural communities, it has to be really hard to find. And I've heard that from other people I've talked to too, that it, it's difficult to reach those areas with different organizations and things like that. So that's a great point. That's a really great way for them to still, you know, foster a relationship with somebody with that shared interest with it, even though they are maybe further away from a large city or something like that, like you had said. So how has the community kind of grown and evolved since Active Project was first started? From the very beginnings to now being over 2000 members, how has that community kind of evolved and changed? So we've been working on it for many years and we had a lot of, I guess, test pilots for lack of a better term. Folks that were really engaged in the active lifestyle and adaptive sports world that helped us develop this from all over the country. So, you know, this is a project that has been put together from not just KBF, but from the adaptive sports community and adaptive sports organizations. And we are taking feedback daily. Like there's tons of opportunity for feedback on the site. There's tons of links. Tell us what you'd like. We are looking at that and we're building it for our community and what they want. Adaptive sports organizations are growing. Like we have over 350 on the platform right now, but there are so many other sports teams, rugby teams, wheelchair lacrosse teams, basketball, things like that, that I myself am like reaching out to and, and making sure that we are, have them on the platform. And then we're going to abilities expos to share. We're going to conferences and you know, this platform isn't just for the people with disabilities. There are tons of recreational therapists and PTs that utilize this resource as well. And, you know, tons of them have made their own profiles and said, hey, I'm a PT in this area. I'm willing to help you if you have questions or I'm a recreational therapist. It's not just for the adaptive sports user. It's for the whole, you know, community of people around us. And it's really nice that this is like kind of a space where everybody can come together and share and learn from each other and explore together. I, I think that's a really unique and really cool part of the platform. It seems to be really collaborative in that way. And I like that you're constantly evolving as well. Cause I mean, I know just from my notifications, I feel like there's always organizations and things popping up all over. So I'm sure it's challenging to keep up with all the new adaptive sports organizations and teams that are coming in. But I appreciate that, you know, evolving nature that you're continuously updating and changing to kind of reflect that. Yeah, it's called the Active Project for a reason. It's a project <laughs> and it's ongoing and it's going to continue to change and evolve as the community needs it to. So... We talked a lot about the different types of connections that have been made. And I, you know, I'm always so drawn to the connection piece of anything I talk about, but can you share some examples of how Active Project has facilitated meaningful connections and discussions between members that you've seen or that you've heard about? Yeah. So like myself personally, tons going back to that traveling, I've hand cycled with folks in St. Louis and mountain bike with people in Ohio, skied in different places. So there's those connections, but also we've got some feedback from organizations that say, Hey, you know, somebody reached out wanting to join in our programming because they found this resource that we're on. Those are the stories that we love hearing. And that's exactly why we built it. We want to, you know, help people connect and live that active lifestyle that they thought they may not have ever been able to live again. Just those stories are why we created it. And we want people to 
continue to connect with each other, connect with organizations and build the adaptive, active lifestyle. So I wanted to pivot for a second and I wanted to talk about some of the work that KBF is doing in general, you know, aside from just active projects. I also had heard and saw on your website that there are grant funding opportunities and scholarships for individuals with traumatic spinal cord injuries. So I was wondering, could you tell us a little bit about those opportunities? And I was just curious how those, you know, financial awards supported people in pursuing different adaptive sports and different avenues. Kelly Brush Foundation has been around for about 18 years now. And, you know, the grants and scholarships is another one of those reasons that led us to build Active Project. We do adaptive sports grants. So if somebody's looking for a hand cycle, they can apply for our grant and we can help fund that. Any kind of adaptive sporting recreational equipment. Those grants, we have two cycles a year and we do roughly a million dollars in grant funding a year. And then we also have scholarships. And our scholarship kind of built off of our grant program we have an awesome grant review committee that looks at everyone's grants individually and comes together as um, a group and discusses what we can do for that person. And we really focus on, you know, people that are introduction to adaptive sports. So it's like their first piece of equipment, they're top on our list, but we were getting folks that have never tried the equipment before apply for grants. And that was really tough because adaptive sports equipment is really expensive. It could be five times the cost as an able-bodied person would spend on equipment. So with them not using the equipment before, we it was tough to give them that grant. So we created a scholarship, which gives them $500 to go and test out the equipment with an adaptive sports organization then they can help get dialed into the right equipment that works for them and then come back and apply for a grant. So we try not to turn anyone down. If they've never used it, that's what they're gonna get is that 500. But we really encourage people to apply for that scholarship. That is year round. So you can apply for it at any time. And then that'll feed into you know the active fund grant, which will purchase the equipment. And like I said, that active project came off of that because we were having questions of like, okay, I have this $500, but where do I go? So the active project is, you know, that's that kind of fed into that too. Is like, all right, let's help people and guide them to the right resources so that they can try out this equipment. I like that you have both sides of it. Cause I just know from, I was in education. So I know like the assistive technology piece and I know how expensive that stuff is. So I can only imagine how expensive sporting equipment can be. I mean, sporting equipment in general is very expensive for, for a lot of sports. So I like that you have that opportunity to have someone try out and see what works for them so they know more about what they're purchasing. Because I feel like that's probably a struggle for a lot of people trying to get into it, you know, figuring out what equipment works best for them and their needs and the sport and all of that. I'm sure that's difficult. Yeah. Can you imagine like, all right, I, I figured out I can still mountain bike. Let me look up adaptive mountain bikes. $10,000 when our able-bodied peers can go to Walmart for a couple hundred dollars. It may not be the best bike, but it's an introduction bike to the sport. So there's a big gap between cost from the able-bodied community and the disability community for recreational equipment. Oh yeah. It's a massive difference. So I appreciate the fact that you have both of those kind of separated out for the people who kind of know what they need versus the people who are just starting out and really need that support in figuring out what works for them before they spend a lot of money on something, not knowing whether or not it's going to be beneficial and useful for them. And I'll make sure to link the grant and the scholarship in the show notes for everybody so that they can access that as well. So do you have any specific examples of how those awards have benefited people who have received them? Have you heard like any stories from recipients about how it helped them find a piece of equipment or something that really helped them in their adaptive sports? We send out a survey after you're awarded your grant and ask you like, hey, what's your experience been? And man, if you're ready to cry, like read those stories. We share it with our grant review committee and our organization and it's a tear fest hearing some of the stories. Uh, a couple examples. 
one, a mom that, you know, in her grant application wrote that she is tired of sitting in the driveway and watching her husband and kids ride bikes. And she just wants to participate with the family. That one stood out the most to me. And when I review a grant that says stuff like that, I'm just like, oh, I like, what can we do? I'll do anything to, to get this person the equipment. So that's one. And then we have Paralympian athletes that come to us and say, hey, you know, we don't get paid very much. We spend a lot of time focusing on, you know, representing our country and the sports world. And it's tough. Like we need help too. And seeing some of our grant recipients on podiums is one of the really, really coolest thing ever as well. Just knowing that our funders, you know, the people that give us money so that we can give that money out to these people and all the hard work that everyone at the Kelly Brush Foundation does from our interns to our executive director to our, our programs and marketing and director of development, everyone works so hard to just try to help people and build these kind of stories. It's great that, you know, regardless of where the people are on their sports journey, it, it's really nice to see how impactful this scholarship and the grant could really be. That's really touching about the family too. I feel like that would have gotten to me if I was reading it as well. I think that's what everybody wants just to be, you know, the opportunity to be included with your family, with your friends. So it's great that this grant can help somebody do that. That's really powerful. And so I did want to talk about leading into the donors and the grant funding. What are some of the different fundraising opportunities that the Kelly Brush Foundation is currently participating in? And is there a way for anybody who's listening to get involved with any fundraising support? We have quite a few fundraising opportunities. Our biggest annual event that's been the, the founding of KBF is the KBF Ride. It's hosted in Vermont in September every year. And this started because our founder, Kelly Brush, was in a ski accident when she was racing in college and her team and community, the skiing community, wanted to help her get back to being active. And they did a bike ride. They did like a hundred mile ride and that raised funds for her to purchase equipment. And then Kelly was like, all right, let's continue to do this and help other people. So that's our biggest fundraiser of the year. We also have another ride on the West Coast in the Bay Area, and that one is growing and growing. And if you're in the Bay Area, like we would love to have you come out and ride. There's a mountain bike version and a road cycle version. And then we do some Inspire events throughout the, the country where we get together and kind of a gala event and invite people out and help us with that. And then we have family foundations, corporate sponsors, all those kind of things that help us out as well. Awesome. And I will make sure to link, I think there's information about the rides on your website, correct? Yes. All of our information from how to help fundraise to how to get on that active project. We have some sports camps that we co-host with other adaptive sports organizations. All of our information is on the website. And I'm going to make sure to add that into the notes too. So <laughs> hope our listeners are going to have a very thorough list this episode of all the different opportunities. So make sure you check those out if you're listening. And I also wanted to say there's some beta projects you have going on on your website too, right? Like there was like an events database and equipment classified section. I know it's in beta mode, but I was curious, could you explain those two initiatives and what you're hoping that users will be able to get out of those opportunities? So like I was saying earlier, it's a project that's ongoing and we're taking feedback from the community and we're just going to continue to build what they want. So our beta project is events. So all of the organizations that are already on our platform are going to be able to start adding their programming and that's going to be put on the map as well. So like you can search and filter a basketball tournament and find that event going on or if just like local, you know, people are getting together and, and putting something together. We can throw that event on the platform as well. Classifieds is another one that we're working on. A lot of people need help purchasing new equipment. And if they can sell their old equipment to help fund, that's a great option. Or, you know, it's a, another great option if somebody doesn't necessarily want to go through our scholarships or grants and they have the cash funds to purchase equipment, 
they're going to be able to do it there. We're just going to continue to build and, and have some beta projects going on. And we're lucky enough to have an amazing community around us that are helping us build each one of these features on our platform. I thought both of those projects were really cool when I was looking at, you know, this debate a part of it. The events is really nice because it takes a lot of the legwork out of finding things. Like you could find an organization, they have to go find their events, you have to find their calendar, but then like to be able to go to still that one source and say, okay, I'm looking at my map. Oh, look, there's a local meetup, you know, next weekend. Like, great. It's right there. I don't have to go to another place to find it. It's all right there for me. I think that's so helpful. Ease of use is always a big thing for me. So I think that makes things easier to do. And then I thought the classifieds was a great idea too, just because, I mean, I know we talked about it before that just the expense. So being able to either buy something used, I think that'll make that sports a lot more accessible than to people, hopefully. We're trying to make it the, the most accessible, efficient spot for adaptive sports. It's like the hub for adaptive sports, right? Like we don't want you to have to have 12 clicks and go to different pages. We want all the information to be there. But at the same time, those clicks will be there. If you want to go to, you know, this event's nonprofit's website and see what they're about on their side, you can see it too. But we collaborate with all of them and make sure that the info is up to date as much as possible. And another cool thing is we give them access to their pages. So, you know, I'll use... Wasatch Adaptive Sports in Utah as an example, they have access to their page and they can log in, change their events, change their about, change their programming. All of that is available to them as well. So it's really just a partnership with the whole Adaptive Sports community. That's really great. It'll be nice and easy then to keep it up to date. It's just to be able to go and do it yourself, I think makes things a lot easier. And then it keeps the information relevant for everybody and I could see how that would be helpful. And, and like you said, it's a really great way to build those connections between the organizations and everybody at Kelly Brush Foundation and Active Project. We wanted to make it, you know, open for them as well. But at the same time, if they don't have the time and bandwidth to do it, we have a team to update their stuff as well. So it's just a collaborative partnership that we wanted to make sure they have rights to their own projects and organization. I, I like the ongoing theme of like the flexibility on the options. They can do their own page. They don't have to, if they don't have time, you can have all the clicks if you want to, but you also could have less clicks. So I, I, I appreciate that it's so flexible for accommodating so many different people and users. That's obviously the goal, but it's great to see, you know, that kind of executed as well. I'd love to share that. I kind of said at the beginning, but just because it's called adaptive sports, you know, and you, Maybe you don't consider yourself as an athlete. It doesn't mean that there isn't something out there for you. The Active Project has the resources for you. Hop on, check it out. You know, if you think that like, oh, I'm a quad, I would never be able to snow ski or mountain bike. There are people out there that have engineered and developed a adaptive equipment to work just for you. And we're here to help you find those resources. That's awesome. And I really appreciate all of the work that's being done over there to bring adaptive sports to more people. I, I think that the work being done is really great. And I appreciate you taking the time, Matt, to share with us today about everything being done with the Kelly Brush Foundation and with Active Project and just all the work being done within the adaptive sports community in general. Thank you so much for sharing everything with us today. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Assembling Inclusion podcast. I hope the information in this episode taught you something new, gave you a new idea, or showcased a new perspective. If you liked the episode, feel free to leave us a review or comment. If you have a recommendation for an individual or an organization who would make a great guest, you can message us or send us an email at assemblinginclusion at gmail.com. See you next time.